Hi everybody, I'm artist and art therapist Micah Gogan and today we're going to be looking at series three for our monoprint landscape. This is the third and final series so I hope you catch the other two videos to catch up and follow up with our process. Today we're going to be using a marsh scene and we're going to be using the three color process using our primaries and we're going to do one color at a time using the subtractive method which is different from the other two videos that we've done thus far. So we have a ghost print and a saturated print with a little bit of metallic embellishment so we're building on what we learned from series one and two and this time we're going to be working with a rectangle image and we're going to still use our square six by six gel plate but I'm going to show you how you can crop and manage just capturing the most interesting parts of your landscape imagery. <laughs> So here we are getting started with our image. Uh, the one difference from this versus the other videos is I'm actually working on a rectangle image. So instead of having to format something to a square, I wanted to show how you could just capture a portion of the image. Now, I've already got my hinge method down. We've talked about that in previous videos, but basically these are pieces of paper that are about an inch bigger than the plate itself. So they're seven by seven. And I've just put a piece of tape on either side so that when I flip back and forth, it covers the totality of the plate and I can just have my print and my ghost print. I've isolated the most interesting section of the composition for what I want to do. And then we're going to be applying this uh, slightly different than some of the previous series with this uh, monochromatic landscape. I've got my brayer. Of course, I've got my six by six uh, gel press gel plate. And then I'm going to be using golden open acrylics. And I'm going to be using just quinacridone magenta, benzomidazolone light, and phthalo blue green shade. So just like printer colors, I'm going to use uh, the three basic colors, and I'm going to print color by color, uh, which is a little bit different. Now, I do have a little bit of iridescent gold uh, that I will use at the end, uh, but for, essentially, I'm just going to do uh, color by color. So uh, for this, I'm actually going to just put the paint right on the plate, and I'm going to start by using my lightest color. So I'm going to go with my benzomidazolone light, and I'm going to just put what I consider to be like a pea size amount on the plate making sure that I have no debris. I don't want any of this dried up paint to be on the plate. And I'm just gonna go back and forth across the image, gelling the plate with the open slow drying acrylic paint. And how much is too much paint? If you cannot see your image, then there's too much paint on the actual image. So I'm just gonna go across horizontal and vertical until I get a smooth finish where I can see my image underneath. And then I'm going to um, use my silver brush, uh, bristlong brushes, and I'm just going to be able to remove some of the image away. Now, I'll just keep a paper towel handy for this. I'll dip the brush in uh, a little bit of water moisture and anything that I don't want to be yellow. So for example, I don't see any yellow being in the clouds, so I'm just gonna remove that information. And this is the subtraction. Uh, before we were putting on stuff with a positive motion, now we are subtracting. And why would I even put it all over the plate if I'm just gonna remove it? Well, because I get this hazy translucency of colors, which you'll see makes the prints very exciting. So we're going to be able to take a look when we remove the excess yellow. I'm leaving just a little bit of the residue behind. Cleaning my plate off. And you can even take, if you know you want it to be crystal clear, you can take your paper towel and just use a finger and take some of that residue off. Okay, but I want some of it to stay on there. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is the channel for the water. And again, it doesn't have to be pristine, but I am just removing the little plugs for the waterways. Carry that right off. And again, for the larger areas, I might just come in and map it out with a paper towel. Whoop! Sound effects help. And... I'm just going to take a little bit of this excess off to make it cleaner, but I do want some of that residue, like I said. I don't want it to be super pristine. 
So there's a certain amount of not caring that comes along with this, right? Okay, so with that, I have my yellow down and I'm ready to print the first um, print and ghost print here. So I'm gonna start and just flip my guy over, massage the paper, and then give it a alley-oop. And that is my first pass with my yellow. Then I'm gonna do my ghost print. Same technique. Now the paper itself will pull most of the paint off of the plate, so I don't have to clean very much, but I will have to clean my brayer. But there is my ghost and my saturated print of my yellow. Then I'm just gonna clean my brayer real quick and come back with a little magenta, a hint of magenta. Okay, so now I'm gonna come back with my second color, the quinacridone magenta. And I'm just gonna, again, put a pea size amount on the plate. And then I'm gonna take my brayer and again, go vertically and horizontally to make sure that I've got even distribution. How much is too much paint? Again, if I cannot see the image, then there is too much paint on the plate. And this is borderline too much. So if I have that problem, I can just take a paper towel, wipe some excess on the paper towel, and then the brayer will lift up an additional amount. So if you feel like you put too much, and then you can always collage this into something fun later. Okay, and now I have a nice, clean, transparent image of the magenta on the plate. And what I'm going to do is, again, take my brush. Now, I um, do not want a lot of magenta in the sky because that's mostly my blue. So, again, I'm going to take the same effect where I wipe away. A lot of the magenta and I'm just keeping it in a loose general way remembering to wet my brush frequently in between so that I can really mop it up but I do want some of that haze and I'll show you why when we are printing and then I'm gonna pull up the channels again for the water And it's good that I have the transparency of the plate to kind of look through and decide, you know, what I like and what I want to keep as far as the color scheme goes. Okay, and there's my quick general fix on the uh, scenery. And then I'm going to take my paper towel and wipe out, you know, a little bit more clean areas. And then I'm going to take a little bit more out of the sky here. I don't want it to be pristine, but definitely have a little bit of character there. Okay, now I'm going to do something else as well. I'm going to take just the highlights of this, and I'll use my brush to do it. Just the highlights of the grass. So just that I'm removing some of this magenta, just to create some texture. Not everywhere, but mostly on the tops of the grass. A little bit here in the background. Perfect. All right, and then I'm ready to print. And because my hinges are set, it should put the registration, meaning the lineup of the image, right back on top where I left it. So I am massaging. This is my saturated print. Once I get all four corners down, uh, wow. And then I have my ghost print. And sometimes the ghost print is a little bit more amazing than the saturated print you pick but that way I have a nice clean marking of either one to choose from. Uh, so now I'm going to repeat the process with my phthalo blue. So now I'm coming in strong with my final color. This is my phthalo blue. Notice how I did go lighter to darker. Put about a pea size on there and then again I'm going to go vertically and horizontally.
how much is too much paint. If I cannot see my image, then it's too much paint. Okay, I can see, but I am gonna take just a little bit more, so I'm using my paper towel method to pull the excess off. Perfect. And then I'm gonna take my brush and now I do want the sky to be visible because that's where my blue is. So I'm going to be doing the reverse. Now I'm going to be taking the parts off of the yellow that I don't want to be visible because I've already got my um, marshland marked off with some color. Let me just pull some of that off. Uh, I'm even going to remove some of the clouds just so that I have some variance in my sky. I have a clouded marsh, so it's solid blue, but then there's also a little bit of you know, energy going on. Let some of my brush strokes really play the essence of the gel plate there. My water, of course, will be blue, but I am gonna remove the extra marsh here marsh grass and the colors where all three colors are present of course will make like a homemade black so that's kind of what I'm going for for the edges here so that I can have a little bit more and then I'm going to take my paper towel and run around my finger here and just really clean any of the blue, but I'm kind of wiggling my finger around so I can have some energetic mark making. Again, not wanting everything to be pristine, but just taking some sections out. Very playful, very fun, very expressive. Okay, and then I'm going to flip my saturated print first. Here we go. Massaging it down. Wow, and then I've got my ghost print. Lovely, and I've got a saturated and a dark, again, just capturing the square image of that. And then the fun part for the additional is that I can take my gold, because these prints are still wet, I can take a little bit of gold and put it out. This is again still the open, the slow drying golden acrylic. And this is the iridescent bright gold, which is a fine color. And then I'm taking my uh, round brush here, which is a little bit more um, controlled. I can do a little bit more fine mark making. And then I can come in and actually embellish right on the print for some additional gold mark making with the grass that gives me that metallic wow factor. Um, and I'm not going to add too much because I really want the expressive mark making of the plate to showcase. So I'm just going to add a little bit in a couple of areas for some additional embellishment. And what I end up with is something like this, which is finished. And you can see the iridescent shining. Um, and you just end up with some really playful, expressive prints, whether you have the saturated or the ghost print. You can even go back in with a marker and do some dark mark making on the ghost print. But this concludes our Landscape Mono Print series. If you're interested in learning more about this, you can join me for one of my online gel press, gel plate classes, where we'll have fun and expressive mono print madness with the gel press gel plate doing landscapes. And uh, you can find that online at micagogan.com. We'd love you to stay tuned for more fun and expressive videos uh, from gel press on how to be playful and exciting with your mark making um, and your artwork. Hey.